Green Kid was one of the best decks back in OPO1, but ever since then, Green has felt very mid. Well, ever since OPO2, I guess, with Kinemon. Green was super unreasonable in set one because of ACOS Kid, but then Bandai printed 20 different cards that absolutely demolished ACOS Kid. And ever since then, Mono Green decks have simply felt way too fair. Kid's double, uh, the Kid Leader's double attack isn't as strong because we can't hide behind ACOS Kid anymore. Odin is just another ACOS Kid Deluxe deck. Kinemon's a control deck that is now just simply inferior to Black. But now we have a new Mono Green Leader, and Uta could actually bring Mono Green back. This might actually be the very first unfair green leader. The ability to draw an extra card every single turn is actually too insane. This is the only leader that can draw off their leader ability without a hand size restriction. And it's just like, it's, it's actually way too nuts. Y'all are going to see in some of the gameplay today. Now, the film engine isn't the craziest engine on the planet, right? Because Uta specifically draws film units. But Seven, Cost, Luffy, and Brook are both cards that make uh that allow us to play multiple units which takes huge advantage of being able to draw those extra cards right so not only do we draw extra cards but we also get to play multiple multiple units at the same time and on top of this drawing a card every turn also goes well with the eight cost kid that i was mentioning at the start so we're once again going to be abusing one of green's best card and uta allows kid to still be strong because uh because Utah is able to spend their board the entire game, the opponent might run out of removal to deal with ACOS Kid, or we still have enough cards to defend ourselves even if they get rid of ACOS Kid. So let's go ahead and peep the list. One more thing before we get into the deck list. If this deck list is clean to y'all, y'all mess with the video and stuff like that, please make sure to like. And if y'all want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. With that being said, now let's actually look at the deck list. This is my deck list for Utah here, and uh, as you can see, it's fairly standard. Some of the key cards to mention here are seven cost Luffy, so this card's absolutely insane, right? Uh, on play, you get to play up to one film or straw hat character with the cost of four or less from your hand, so we have a lot of options to play from here. Like, we can do Utah, so we get two blockers at the same time, or we can play Film Brook, and this card calls a three cost unit, so we actually get to call three units at the same time, right? A seven drop, four drop, and a three drop. Uh, or we can call this Sanji, which is going to be very good against decks like Whitebeard and Black Yellow Luffy that like to pump up their leader. This card gets an extra plus 1k power for every 3 rested down on our field. So this will be a very good attacker against those decks. Or we just have the Film Nami for the Advantage Engine, which obviously can also be played off Brooks. So 7 cost Luffy uh, is one of the most central cards to the deck. And then the other uh, central card here is actually Nami, which this is just a part of our Advantage Engine, right? So as I was saying at the start of this video, the thing that makes Utah so insane is that we get to draw an extra card every single turn which is just so nuts and if we have a nami that gets played on the board in six we actually get to double draw every single turn which so it just gets crazier and crazier this is why you always see utah players with super ginormous hands it's just uh it's just absolutely insane um and then the last card i want to mention here which technically isn't a key card but i'm gonna say it's a key card in my list of utah uh is actually a cost kid this card is just so insane. I understand that there's a lot of decks that can remove ACOS Kid. There's a lot of ways to, to play around ACOS Kid, but you still demand a lot of resources from your opponent to demand ACOS Kid. And sometimes if you do like a back-to-back -back ACOS Kid, your opponent simply can't respond and they might lose the game on the spot. So uh, this is huge right now, especially going into like a meta without Sakazuki. Obviously, this card uh, sucks against Sokka. I would still play it, but you basically ignore playing this card against Sokka. But this card is going to be really good against Black Yellow Luffy. It's going to demand a lot of resources from Moria. Um, it's very, it's actually pretty good against Red Purple Law as well, because Red Purple Law will spend their early game using all their Dom Minus getting rid of the board. So by the time ACOS Kid comes on, they might just not have any more left. And yeah, just for those reasons, I think ACOS Kid is good. And uh, one more thing before we get into the card by card. Um, <laughs> Y'all see Post Malone right there, but uh, let me click this. So this is a card that people often want to play in uh, Utah. They want to play this 9 cost Zoro deck. Uh, this nine cost Zoro card, and my thing is, is that I don't really like nine cost Zoro. I think eight cost Kid is better because eight cost Kid actually does something in the matchups it's good against. I think nine cost Zoro is win more into any matchups that you can actually establish it against. Uh, and then on top of that, the decks that it would be good against can answer it. Like Moria answers Zoro like uh relatively easily. I believe like between Kuzan's Ice Ages and stuff like that. Like at least with eight cost Kid. We get to establish a blocker. So even if they remove the kid, we still have defense. And we can still do like back-to-back -back kids. But 9 Zoro isn't really a card that we can reliably do back-to-back -back because it doesn't defend us when we play it. And like even against the Nell, which this card used to be really good against the Nell, now has Kingdom Come, which can easily answer Zoro. So this is why I currently don't opt to play Zoro. I understand the logic behind it, but I honestly don't think it's uh 
it's worth playing in the deck at the moment. Maybe if Green gets away to make sure this card stays protected or something like that. But for the most part, it just feels win more. Or the matchups it would be good against, uh, they already like got the answer for it. But now let's go ahead and get into card by card. So Bonnie. So Bonnie's a pretty a unique option for me. I think people generally choose to play two 2Ks in the slot. But due to my belief that uh, ACOS Kid is such a strong card going into the mesquite, the mesquite format, and it's unsearchable by anything else, I just choose to I choose to include two Bonnies as like the fifth and sixth copy of ACOS Kid. And uh, even if it can't grab the ACOS Kid, it can also search for a Luffy, uh, which is very nice. Uh, it can also search for our Zoro, which is very nice. And I think that's it. It can search for, yeah, Zoro, Luffy, Kid in itself. So obviously it only has 13 targets, but I think 13 targets is fine. Uh, we do just want to see this to hopefully get the kid. And worst case scenario, we whiff and we just draw the card off our leader ability, right? Because that's that's the type of flexibility we get from having a leader that draws a card every turn. Next up to uh, Bueno. So this is just a film blocker. Uh, film Utah really has a limited amount of good film cards. So just basically the last two film slots are just given to Blueno, uh, Blueno here. Um, There's actually only eight film 2Ks at the moment. Uh, if there were more film 2Ks, I'd probably play a 2K instead of this card here. Uh, but a blocker is still really good. Like Until we get, finally get that third film 2K, I think uh, Blueno is the card to run for now. Uh, and Bartolomeo is also an option, but ever since this Utah came out, I don't think Bartolomeo like, really needs to be used. You can just trash an event, reset your characters. I think that this card is uh, better. Next up, Tony Tony Chopper. So this is just a film 2K. Not really much to say. You don't really ever use its ability. The only deck I would imagine playing this against is like maybe Red Green Law. And even then, it's probably not really worth establishing on the board. Uh, you should just try to outdraw them. Next up, Utah Blocker. So this card was also a huge addition to the uh, film Utah deck. Uh, it's just another blocker, which is really nice because it's also film, which is going to go really well uh, with our ACOS kid here. Um, I don't know why Zoro's in the list. Uh, oh, actually tagged it in probably uh but it's gonna go really well with our acos kid here and then it's also like a very good like defensive play like let's say we want to do like an uh, like an aggressive play like with film luffy and brook we can just play a blocker that way we do have that additional defense so this is very solid uh next up Usopp, just another film unit it being a three cost film unit is very very important because we'll be able to play it off our uh brook and we can also play it off kid in certain scenarios if we're just trying to expand our board and force them to answer the kids so that's very good. Film Nami mentioned this at the start. This is one of the key units in this deck. Uh, if this card sticks to the board, we're going to be able to draw two cards every turn. And drawing one card every turn was already insane, right? So being able to draw two every turn is actually just insane. And this is going to be really good against decks that really struggle handling uh, with board, like decks like Wiper and stuff like that. So Film Nami is definitely really insane. Next up, Sanji. This is another godsend to the film deck, man. So the, not only is this the like second ever Film 2K, for green so now we have another searchable 2k off our leader ability but read its ability down next one for every three down on your field this card gets an extra plus 1000 power that's just gonna be so insane against matchups like black yellow luffy uh white beard and stuff like that like green's units aren't generally like that strong like green is pretty like advantage based maybe you get to call two units here and there with like film brook film luffy you have a cost kid to like outgrind your opponent now we have another attacker uh that will help us against those like bs decks like by luffy and white beard so it's a very strong card next up brook this card is just broken being able to play another three cost units very very strong being able to um having a way to be like aggressive as a green deck because green as i already said right it's like focused on like advantage getting rid of your opponent's board stuff like that like having a unit that can actually expand our board is just so strong next up uh film zoro here if i ever wanted to like add in some tech cards like some extra tech cards aside from like the kid and stuff like that. This is probably the first card I would reduce. This card is pretty strong. Like it's four cost 6k stat it is going to be like really good against 6k leaders like Whitebeard, Red Green Odin and stuff like that. But thanks to Sanji coming out, Zoro doesn't feel uh, as necessary. And I honestly feel like I almost never played this card uh, in general. So this definitely would be the first card I would reduce. I could see reducing this like two or zero in order to run some more tech cards. But be careful of how many tech cards you run because Film Utah can only draw film cards. So just keep that in mind. Next up, Seven Cost Luffy also mentioned this at the start. This card's just insane, right? Like it's a blocker. You get to call our film units and stuff like that. Just a uh, very powerful card. Next up, Akos Kid. As I said, uh, even during Sakazuki's ban, this card is obviously bad against Sakazuki, but against everything else, it's pretty strong. Like, historically, this card's been strong against Blue. This card's going to be strong against Black Yellow Luffy. This card's going to demand a lot of resources from Moria. Like, this card is just 
so so insane and i think that this is like the uh tech card to run right now i think acos kid is definitely gonna shake up the format obviously all these decks do have answers to acos kid but by playing acos kid you demand them to uh see the answer or to see enough of their answers if we have multiple acos kid in worst case scenario this card does just call a three cost unit so like our uta will still be on the board or our, or our nami or usap will still be on the board so just keep that stuff in mind next up new genesis so this card's very strong a uh, very strong addition to the deck so basically you just tech, check top three add any film card to your hand uh one thing i do want to know is if you have this card in your hand turn one don't use it yet wait to see what you draw off your life and from the top of your deck before using new genesis so you actually know what you're searching for because the thing is is this card gives you your dawn back which means you can literally use it whenever so like you should almost never use this card on turn one like uh you can start using this as soon as like turn two like if you don't have like a film nami or usopp in your hand you can be like okay new genesis let me find it uh but for the most part you want to wait before using this card and this card can also grab our events here so in some cases if you have enough counter in your hand you can actually just wait until the very end of the game to search for those and once again, just so this makes sense to y'all, this is because we get the Dawn back, right? It's like a free search that we get to use whenever. So just, there's no need to use it immediately. It's just like, this is like called like optimization, I think. I don't know what it's called. Like Pokemon players probably understand this concept a lot, but basically like just try to do, like try to get the most information before using a card like this because it's free. Next up, uh, we have three backlight. I'm still debating on whether I want uh two or three backlight. Uh, uh backlight so i think prior to uh mesquite meta i think people generally ran like four of this and like two to three of this and this card is very strong like being able to pop a rested five class is going to be very strong especially when considering cards like kuzan and three cost brook and stuff like that so i do think three copies is very possible but also this card which i'll talk about in a moment is just so so strong and i kind of want four copies of it so i'm kind of debating so I don't know, but it is just a strong card. I think it should be included. Just being able to green, having like an actual form of removal uh, is going to be very, very nice, especially against decks like RP Law and stuff like that. And being able to rest that blocker when going for lethal will be nice as well. Like, let's say we like backlight and then we go like 10-10 at the opponent with I'm Invincible, right? Like just stuff like that is very strong. Then lastly, I'm Invincible. This card is so insane. So I'm going to be honest. For my first draft of Utah, I just didn't run I'm Invincible because I was like, okay, I'm going to just a cost kid troll people or something but this card is just so insane like because we draw we're drawing like a billion cards like uh throughout the entire game most matchups have like a grind fest against us where they run out of cards and because they run out of cards this card allows us to go for lethal out of nowhere ideally if we have two of these cards in our hand we can go nine 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 and we can ko our opponent even if they have two life so this card is absolutely insane i think it's currently a shoe in in utah and i think it just makes utah's lethal potential so insane it actually this card is literally just kids leader ability isn't that crazy like look at this like utah's like damn near just better kid right now like this is literally kids leader ability except kid is only once per turn and we can draw multiple i'm invincibles to you so this this card's just so insane bro it's just <laughs> i like utah bro like this is the first green deck that feels like it's not too fair but anyways let's go ahead and look at some actual gameplay
this is it for my video on green utah um green utah is actually way better than i thought it was i've been hating on green utah for a while now but i think i really underestimated the ability it has to like draw an extra card every turn so i definitely will be moving this deck up on my tier list and honestly even in the sakazuki meta i think the deck was fairly decent as well um it's just my opinion is my opinion is that against like good players and also people who like tech for Utah, I do think Utah won't be able to beat those players, but I do think it has a really good matchup spread right now into the meta. Like you're going to beat the bad Moria players. You have a pretty good shot against Moria players that aren't running Kuzan. Um, you have a pretty uh, good chance against Red Purple Law as well. Um, and you also should just clap Black Yellow Luffy, which I think I don't really have a high opinion of Black Yellow Luffy, but that's a talk for another day. Uh, so I am very uh, excited for Green Utah. Let me know what y'all think about Green Utah after the ban. If you guys have any suggestions for the deck list, make sure to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. With that being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.